What's going on, guys? My name's Corey Kamori, and welcome to Lyric Breakdowns here on the Breakdown Channel. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing Opeth's newest track, Heart in Hand. And in today's episode, I also have another guest with me today, Mr. John Conway. How's it going? Going well, man. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Thanks. Thank, thank you, as always, for coming in on this episode and uh, all the... I think we've done all the stuff that's been Opeth related together. I haven't done any Opeth stuff solo, so good. It's just because <laughs> I know that I know, I know. Here I am hitting the mic. Sorry for everyone hearing that. Um, I know quite a bit about Opeth, but you are definitely the Opeth expert uh, on the channel, well, and it's funny because um, the last time we discussed Opeth, we actually had a lot of people. We had about I say a lot of people, a lot of people for me, about like ten folks asking, "Hey, do this song, do this song. Hey, yes. can you do this song?" I was like. I, where the fuck were you guys like a couple of years haven't. ago? We were like totally <laughs> knee deep in fucking Opeth then, but we're we're gonna pick up the slack there and, and we're gonna try to start knocking away at some Opeth songs, you know. I'm totally down. So and, and speaking of which, it's gonna be a great year to discuss Opeth because mm. Opeth is releasing a new album this year. Yeah, and it's a special album in that it's. An album that's going to be released in English and in Swedish, right? Which is, have they ever done that before? No, uh, not a full album. Um, Just like songs, they yeah, were. Yeah, the, the only one that I really know um, is one of the bonus tracks off Watershed. I think I played it for you when we were on the way to the to my wedding, actually, because you and Baker. Oh yeah, you and Baker were in the backseat. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's that, but um, I don't think. What's the name of that song? <laughs> Oh, it is actually written in Swedish? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. You're supposed to know everything um, about Opeth, even know how to speak Swedish. <laughs> no, definitely can't do that. But um, it was uh, like a very chill acoustic song. Um, not very hooky, you know, kind of like it was It was, uh, um, It was. was definitely like a bonus track, I think. I mean, it was It was pretty. It was good. It was It was. It was. was fine. But um, Someone in the comments I'm, will let us know what it is. Because yeah. what's funny is that last time we did an episode that was like a podcast talking about new metal, we had a couple of people be like, it's this song, like the Deftones oh, nice. song we were trying to, uh, the one that he says his street name. And then oh, yeah. they were like, it's this song. I'm like, oh, cool. Thank you. Good. Guy was kind of like, douchey about it after, but oh, I was like, right. whatever. Sure. <laughs> we just, take our victories when we can, yeah. uh, you know, when we can get just them. trying to be helpful, I'm sure. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing um, like full band, you know, kind of with 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 drums distortion of the keys with that with that um, Swedish um, element to it. I've, it's gonna I've, be a good year for Prague. Just having we yeah. got this and Tool. Yeah. So th these two albums alone should you know S give us our Prague <laughs> picks. Hopefully. So the last time Tool and Opeth. It's just off the top of my head. So if, uh, I'm sure. Um, I'll get corrected. Last time they released new music, Tool re released 10,000 Days, and Opeth released, do you know? Was it Ghost Reveries? Yeah, Ghost Reveries. Good Damn. job. Well, one album is better than the other. Oh, yeah. but uh, I like 10,000 Days, but uh, Ghost Reveries, for me, would definitely take the cake there as far as... For sure. But So, th so, that's, so Ghost Reveries came out, and then Watershed, Heritage, Pale Communion. Damn, they've released <laughs> that many albums and since Tool? Sor Sorcerers. Yeah. Wow. So four. So yeah. And they're on a pretty Jeez. good two year schedule. Opeth has been pretty good yeah. about that, I feel like. Um so let's see what Ghost Reveries came out in like oh five, oh six. Watershed was yeah, I was in yeah, probably like oh eight, oh nine ish. Mm -hmm. And then Heritage. Heritage came out pretty quick. I think I was in eleven. Yeah, no, that was that eleven because right. it came out with Hunter the Hunter with Macedon. Yep. And then Pale Communion was like 2014-ish, I think. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then Sorcerers was 2016, 17. Yeah, something. So, I mean, they're like two, two and a half years, I feel like. Um, yeah, they've... So they've it's pretty good. And it's like, I'm always wondering if this is going to be the one, right? Like, they're finally going to, like, take that hiatus, you know, just stop. and they're just going to stop. And then it's like, all of a sudden, we just get hit with, like, uh, Opeth, one, new album those leak. bands that... It's interesting that they can put out music so uh, regularly and not repeat themselves creatively because i feel like there are obviously elements that are present on all those releases that were just mentioned there that clearly for me say this is opeth but at the mm -hmm. same time they're always incorporating something new and something just i don't know just treading new ground on all those releases and the fact that they can do that in just such a regimented schedule maybe it's that schedule that allows them to really feel yeah 
more on track with doing that? I don't know. I don't know. Could be. I think the only consistent thing is that somebody always complains that there's no growls, but um, <laughs> I don't. I don't think that's coming back. But um, yeah, that and that was definitely present on on this one yeah. as well. Everyone's like, "Where's the growls?" But I mean, yeah. I will say we have the crunchy guitars again with this one, mm-hmm. and uh, this I really loved Sorceress. That was one of my favorite albums that came out that year. Um, and I felt like they really started integrating some of that older sound with the newer sound. But then this track here definitely feels like it's a continuation of that that path that they've been going down. Yeah. And that the guitars definitely sound crunchy. They sound like something that could have came off of like Watershed or, I mean, at times maybe Ghost Reveries mm-hmm. mixed with that really high, like like 70s, fun- like psychedelic vibe that yeah. is... I- really present now i think just i i kind of how i group opeth this definitely fits almost exclusively i feel like with this new kind of um grouping of albums starting i guess with like heritage i guess so like heritage all, you know all the all the clean vocal ones uh, that are exclusively clean you know it, it just in my mind i think they um they all do favor one another you know uh, and and there were some crunchy guitars in, in, in those albums. Um, so I, like, I don't, I think if you listen to the tones of Ghost Reveries and even Watershed, I, f- I feel like, um, the guitars do have a bit more gain on them and they're, they jump out more in the mix. So like now I feel like the gain is kind of dialed back. Kind of like you said, that seventies mix and, and the guitars just aren't high in the mix at all. Um, this one on, on this single, I feel like they, they jump out a little bit more than usual, but like, listen to, so like uh, Moon Above, Sun Below on, on Pale Communion, right? That has some heavy moments. That's probably one of the pre- – that is the heaviest one on that album, I think. It's, it's also one of my favorite mm-hmm. tracks of, of, of all of their catalog. But, um, you know, you can't really hear the guitar, but it is still, you know, has high gain, but it's just so far back in the mix. Um, I think um, then moving into that kind of 70s prog – sound the keyboards have really taken over um, yeah I and, agree. And, and they match and sometimes they um i feel like they're they really you know, weave the in and out of yeah the guitar parts where you mm-hmm. almost can't even de- tell what is what well it's just so hot it's just so loud you know they're they're really high they, but i feel like um you know for um like damnation they were a new edition, mm-hmm. not yet like permanent, right? So like Steve Wilson doing the keys and stuff. I feel like so it was pretty obvious that they were there. Deliverance, they were on there, but you couldn't really tell. And then even Watershed, they were you know like flutes and and stuff like that were being used. But um, I feel like it was kind of filler stuff. And then now it's just like over the top, like it's filler, but it's like it's here, like it's it's the keys are it's here to stay. It's here to stay, and you're gonna hear the keys, and sometimes even more than the guitars. So what were your what were your thoughts, your initial thoughts or just your thoughts overall on this new song, Heart and Hand, when it was released? <laughs> like did you like it? So, were there things that were you like, oh, what's up with yeah, that? Yeah, no. Um I'd be happy to share. So I was on my honeymoon when this Oh, that's right. Yeah, right. it happened so, right when you went uh-huh. on your honeymoon. And um I I had Wi Fi, you know, I was in the Dominican Republic Good and thing. I know. So, <laughs> you know, when I'm on my honeymoon, that doesn't mean I'm not gonna scroll through Reddit, right? So <laughs> <laughs> um there's a a subreddit um just called Prog Metal that I follow and someone uh and, and, and with Reddit, um I always sort by hot posts, so it's whatever's popular from the subreddit. So often they're not new posts. So I, I can look and it's that's been on there for nine hours or something like that. So I don't remember exactly when someone had posted a YouTube video of it, but by the time I got to it, it had been removed. So it's like I could oh. see the post and the thumbnail and I opened it and I could read all the comments about people listening and reacting. And then I click on the YouTube thing and it's like, this video has been removed. Like, I was no! like, shit, <laughs> I was so mad. So I figured it had leaked. So I tried just YouTube and I found one and then I immediately sent it to you and Neil. Yeah. And um, I don't, so since I'm not on Facebook anymore, it was shortly after after that that they put it on Spotify. Yeah. The next, the next day they had, uh, they had released their official one, but I, it also reminds me of uh, when Sorceress leaked, 
you know, the one thing I really miss about Facebook is that Michael Ackard feels page. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which, if it's still there. It is. It okay, is. Okay, we got to share He's not that. as it witty is. as he used to be, but it, it, some oh of his stuff God. is still there. I literally just spent hours scrolling through that. If taking I have to pick him or the band memes, 666, I take band memes any day because yeah, he's it's, more consistent. Right, but, dude, you can still, if I go through my... my He's Fold. in the top three as far well, no, as like, I can you got him, band memes, and you have Catatonic you, Youth. You Those are the, the oh, funniest. Geez. Yes. All right. Shout out to Catatonic Absolute. Youth. Oh, my right. God. Three <laughs> social media pages for sure. Band meme 666. The Michael Ackerfields, even though I don't, I don't know if it's even good anymore. But for the archive content, I mean, my phone, you can tell when I found it because I have screenshots of everything. It's just like a whole page of just nothing but Opeth memes. And it's like memes are so usually like pop culture focused. And I mean, sometimes you can get those niche ones, but it's like, there's no metal ones. Like, I mean, metal talks, like they have some, but it's, but this is like Opeth specific, like catered to me and they were so <laughs> good. But um, yeah. And then Catatonic Youth is hands down the best video. You, uh, uh, if I just want to feel better about myself oh as a my musician, God. all I have to do is go and look at that page. And it's the funniest Dude. thing ever. Is so good, um, but uh, I remember back to what I was saying. Like um, when Sorceress leaked, the Michael Ackerfields page leaked it on Facebook, and so oh, really, yeah. So I remember that was how I found it out. So I guess uh, the Prog Metal subreddit is is on it um, as so, well. So when so, you heard it, you you did so, enjoy it, or um, I'm I don't like singles. I, I just don't. And, Especially um, with prog stuff, it's really hard to isolate a it, prog it song is. and just not have it be in the context of the album as I love it because it's new Opeth, but kind of similar to, to Tool. I, I, I have way more positive things to say about this than, than the Tool one, unfortunately. But um, I, I just, it's, it's out of context. And yeah, like prog metal, I mean, they're not known for the singles. Um, for instance back on pale communion which ended up being one of my, my favorite albums um cusp of eternity was the single yeah and i just couldn't you know i just had nothing but bad things to say about it it sounds like a watershed bonus track sounds like a, you know something to da, 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 you know just was not liking it and honestly it took me until i heard that song live at at rebellion when we saw him that i was like holy shit this song rips like this song is really good so even when i liked that album that one never stood out to me as being really good it wasn't until i heard eternal rains have have come so i i think that this is a very single esque song that they released but um it felt I, similar to when they released i don't like uh, the singles typically i like the weird long one you know this one's long enough but it's you know it's pretty straightforward and um it was like devil's uh devil's orchard mm -hmm. it felt like that to me yeah very similar heavier but had the same kind of vibe to it. Yeah. And I like that song. I, I think that's one of the stronger songs off of Heritage, but again, out of context, yeah. it kind of just throws you for a loop and you go, what was the intention with this? Mm -hmm. And then when you throw it into the mix of everything else, you go, okay, I can see that. Yeah. Like, I think the only one that has worked recently for me that was a single was Sorcerer. Sorcerer. I was going to say, yeah, that one just, I don't know if it's because it was short. I don't know if it's because it was just, that chun 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 chun. It was just kind of like, oh my god! Yeah. Like it was clearly, and I bet this one opened. Did, have they released the? They've released the track list, right? Do you know where this one sits? Uh, I can look and see if they have. I don't I feel know like if it probably they have released the. It track sounds like list. it could open it, right? Yeah, I, think, I could. I could I think see they it. Have. I'm pretty sure they have. I'm pretty sure I've read it. I'm gonna let you uh, look that up. But um, do we know the title of this album yet? Yeah, it's in Claude Vernon or something. Oh God, I just said that on record it's uh not english <laughs> it's not it's english. like yeah i don't yeah, let's see nuclear blast released um, something but anyway but i you know i'm i'm definitely this is digging the sound like like for sure um this, this is, is not opening the album this is the third song okay. on the album i was gonna say i sorceress for some reason there was like no doubt in my mind that that would i mean i know the um it didn't technically open it, but um, this sounds like it, it could. But now I'm really interested to, to hear kind of what leads up to it um, because it does start with kind of, you know, it's got that that really moving 
um, guitar part, and then kind of that um, very, very ominous kind of guitar lead comes on at the, at the beginning um, before the vocals come in. Um, sounds almost like, I kept thinking it reminded me of like Wizard of Oz, like the music, I don't know why, but then that, Dun-na, na-na, you know that, it, what that reminds me of is the first track on the BT Bam Parallax 1, uh, oh down, yeah, down 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 yeah. down 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 down. Well, that kind of reminds me of like Wizard of Oz or kind of like the orcs and Lord of the Rings or something. You know, it sounds like someone's. It, it sounds like e- evil is is afoot, right? And so, um, I really like that. I'm glad that they're still keeping that dark, evil, brooding kind of sound. Um, I definitely support and love this band in this new direction you know i think if i had to pick i was talking to baker about this i'd pick their i'd probably pick this these grouping of albums maybe over some of the the older ones that i like so much just because just because it's new and they're you know they're they're going in uh they're kind of you know um branching out in kind of a new direction it's not so tired but it's like i can probably say that if they started putting out like happy sounding stuff that I would not be okay with that. <laughs> so I still like my Opeth to be, yeah, like I said brooding, you know. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think of like prior albums that I would group together. I mean, obviously, like uh, for me, it'd be like Blackwater Park, Ghost Reveries, and then Watershed for me are definitely high marks for me. Yeah. But then, I mean, Damnation is one of my favorite albums of theirs too, which is funny because I remember you telling me that that was not so much a throwaway album for them, but like especially lyrically, it was not. Like Who said you said I said that? Yeah, you said lyrically that a lot of the, Michael said that the, a lot of the songs oh, were just complete yeah, yeah. bullshit. Okay, N- no, he said that, yeah, um, like, no, they're, like they're not about anything. I was like, that's like my fa- one of no, my no, favorite. Not <laughs> saying that that album's a throwaway album, but like from a lyrical standpoint, there's, yeah, there's no, really he, nothing anchored in <laughs> anything that is. Yeah, he, he was just at, making shit. At the first concert I went to, that's that's how that's what he prefaced. That was his uh, stage banter for. Uh, Which he could um, have been trolling because we know that he is a master troll. <laughs> It was the second track on it, um, In My Time of Need. Uh huh. Is that In My Time of Need? Yeah. And um, yeah, he said it was the lyrics are total bullshit. But I mean, if you kind of hear it like summer is miles, miles away, no one would ask me to say. Like, I mean, it, it does. It sounds sound like so it. good, though. And I kept <laughs> thinking, man, what is this about? This is really well, interesting because I wanted to do a deep dive on it. And I was like, sorry. Oh, it's not about anything. Thanks. <laughs> I, always, I always group them. I always like grouping the Opeth albums. You got like the first two, right? You got Working and Morning Rise, which could like literally be the same album. I mean, there's not much difference at all. And then you've got, they've always got these transitional albums, right? They kind of. They they plant their foot. They it's it's like a pivot, and that was my arms are hers. I was gonna say, you know, it's like that was the one for me that I was like, ooh, this is really going yeah. in a more proggy direction. Well, that's, that's where they that's where they kind of latched onto that sound that they kind of honed in on and 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 perfected for like Blackwater Park. So it's like that's the pivot album, and then you've got Still Life, Blackwater Park, and then another pivot is is. Yeah. Reveries and well, and actually, then, uh, and then so the Deliverance Damnation thing. So like Blackwater yeah, Park yeah. kind of is because then that's where he met um, Steve Wilson. Emailed him as he says in his uh, mm-hmm. uh, Albert Royal Albert Hall, mm-hmm. and he talks about you are the greatest band ever. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and uh, and then so they kind of had the Steve Wilsony Deliverance Damnation, and then so I don't I don't really know. I feel like I guess you could probably group from Still Life up to. Um, Ghost Reveries, you can make an argument for that, and then Watershed is definitely the big yeah. pivot because yeah. I remember um, I'm probably repeating myself from previous ones about going and seeing them live. This will be for um, anybody who hasn't seen it before. <laughs> so it was, I saw them right before, like tracks were being leaked for Watershed, but it hadn't come out yet, and so they played. Um, They're like, we're gonna play a new one, and they played Air Apparent. And everybody in the crowd was just like, I mean, you could hear a fucking pin drop at the beginning when it like drops out and you hear dun, 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 dun. I mean, and yeah. then all of a sudden, wham. I mean, everyone was just like staring up, you know, like, oh my God. And then I remember after that, after the show, because I think, no, they ended with Drapery Falls. But right after that, the guy next to me goes, well, I think there's no doubt in our minds that this Opeth album is going to be heavy as shit. And we're just like, <laughs> yes. And it's like, I remember buying it and hearing Coil. And I'm just like, OK, well, that was a nice intro. All right, Air Apparent. And then I remember the Lotus Eaters. While it's heavy, it's got that, they called it the, what's it called? The Grind, I think. 
But once it hit that, you know, it's just like, what the fuck, man? And then it's like the rest of the and album. It goes like into Burden, Burden and, and you're like, power ballad. And I know your thoughts on uh, Porcelain <laughs> Heart. It's the, Porcelain Heart was just not. Yeah, I mean, don't throw me under the bus here too much, but yeah, it's not I my, like. It's I not really my favorite. It's that was great. The, that was the. I mean, again, I like. It's no secret, but I came into Opeth really late, and that was the first Opeth song that I heard, and yeah. I had never really heard anything that was that. It was gothic without sounding cheesy. It in- incorporated elements of folk into metal, which I hadn't heard at that mm. point in time. Uh, a friend of mine from Switzerland, who we played in bands together for years, he introduced me to them, and he's like, "Here, listen to this." And I was like, holy shit, I didn't know that you could incorporate those type of acoustic elements in the metal. Because yeah. I was always very uh, closed off to, it was mostly American metal that that my world was kind of centered around. And it's no secret that it was really those bands that really came from the early 2000s, like the new metal type of stuff. So I, I really hadn't been introduced to anything yet. But then that song really opened up my perspective musically. I was like, holy shit, like... Yeah. Are, are there more bands that do this? And there all were, but they never did it the way that Opeth did it for yeah. me. Because I, I went and I, I I heard that song, went and got Blackwater Park, and then that was just a whole new world for me as well. I was like, wow, like this, mm-hmm. like this is clearly metal as hell. But again, it's not afraid to get weird. It's not afraid to incorporate those acoustic elements, to play with dynamics. Yeah, for sure. You know, and everything, again, was just a wall of sound for me prior to that. So this was really interesting to see that and experience that. But yeah, Porcelain Heart was interesting for me. And it, it was a strange song, I felt, to release as like a single for that album because it kind of does represent the album because it, it has the softer parts, but then it has some of the heavier parts. But... I did not know what to expect when I got Watershed because I was like, oh, I know that song, Porcelain Heart. When I threw that thing in, and like I, like you said, with Coil, I was like, wow, this is beautiful. Yeah. And then Arab Heron comes in, you're like, holy shit, this is fucking... I remember my wife at the time, uh, We were, this was like right when we were dating, I remember playing, uh, I was like, hey, I've been listening to uh, Opeth you know, recently. Have you listened to Opeth before? She's like, no. I played it for her. She's like, oh, wow, this song is beautiful. This is amazing. And then it goes to Arab Parent. She's like, oh, my God, <laughs> this is fucking terrifying. My yeah. wife never, she at that time, didn't listen to metal. But, um, yeah, like, and that really became one of my favorite albums of theirs just because of how many different places it went to thematically, musically, and it just, it's all over the place, but in the best possible way. I like it a lot. Um, but you're right. It definitely is a pivot moment for them in that yeah. they really started shifting their sound. Like It again, wasn't the change. It was the turn. They turned. They turned. They, they kind of they planted their foot, and they looked in a different direction. Heritage, I think, yeah. was the definitive oh, change. Yeah. It was like a huge leap. I remember that seeing them on that tour, and that was the first time I saw them live. Oh, and they people, got so much shit people for that tour, People hated man. them. I, they did a whole jam section when they played porcelain heart i remember because it was at amos the south end with catatonia and uh, during porcelain heart they did a whole jam section where it was literally just a was drum ca- solo catatonia was on that i thought it was uh, catatonia. Uh, mastodon nope it was catatonia on that tour because then no, catatonia is when we saw them at orange Peel. they played with them again at orange Peel so you didn't go to the the heritage hunter show that's not i did but that was at the Fillmore in charlotte and that was with ghost uh opeth and mastodon was that's headlining. what i was gonna say. okay that's the one i'm thinking of so this isn't that show no this was before that this was their first go around oh. to the states when they released heritage and then they came back when they were doing um the the hunter tour uh, with Mastodon, mm-hmm. and then after that, they went to uh, we saw the, uh, Orange the Orange Peel in Asheville. Okay. So this and that was just a that was just like a one off uh, tour. That was there. We're sorry. Let's not play the entire Heritage album. That was an amazing that show. Was great. This one, yeah, that set list. Was but even even uh, even the show with uh, Mastodon and Ghosts, that was also a shift in there. Okay, we're gonna That's we're gonna start incorporating more of the older stuff uh-huh. and the newer stuff to really show you that the stuff really isn't that different from one another. Like, yes, it's softer, but there are some key elements that are in place in this music that is Opeth. Yeah, and um, and I got to hear uh, Demon of the Fall heavy at that show which was cool it's the only way it should be played acoustic it's the, the only Asheville <laughs> show, which i still I'm, like though. i'm really glad um so i was not a 
and we'll get back to the the new song here in a second. I think uh, <laughs> it's I, okay. I, People expect us to go off of on like I was not forty a, minute rants on. Uh, I could not other stuff. get into Heritage at the time. It was you know I always talk to people about it. I think that if it, they released it now, a lot of a lot of people would would understand it um, based on what they've put out after it. But I think it was a uh, a little. They went way, f- you know, they took a huge step in that direction and then kind of scaled back. And then now I feel like, you know, people can get on board with it. But um, if I went to one of those shows, then I don't know if I would have gone to the Asheville one if I had been, because I probably would have been very disappointed, been felt entitled to hear what I wanted to hear at an Opeth show. That was and the vibe at Harris's that time. And it then, was really awkward. So I'm really glad that I didn't go to those um, and that I went to the one in Asheville because that, I feel like that was there because I remember him saying openly, like we oversaturated the, the shows with uh heritage stuff. And they're like, maybe we shouldn't have played so many. And um, yeah. And I, I agree with that. I think they should have been more deliberate in incorporating their uh, older material in with the new material. But again, I think it was, it, it was an interesting direction to go because it really did, act as a um, definitive statement of this is the new direction we're going in. Trust us. It's going to only get better from here. Mm -hmm. And I, when did you revisit heritage? Was it last year? Um, It's been pretty recently, honestly. I mean, I I always had it um, on my playlists and stuff. And, and, and so I was familiar, you know, I would, if it popped up, be like, Oh yeah, this is whatever song off, off heritage. But, um, not until actually fairly recently have I just really dug in again and, um, you know, because I, I won't go to that one if I want to listen to Opeth. You know, that that's not one that I'll have. Like, I could, I'd always been able to leave that one off and been okay with it, whereas all the other ones, whatever new streaming platform or whatever I get, it's like I have to load up opeth like all the albums you know and or if i back when i had cds you know i had to have every single one with me um but heritage was always one that i could leave out but now i've i've been more inclusive with it i think i revisited it uh earlier this year actually um yeah it was back in march i revisited it because it was an album i always enjoyed and going back and listening to it in context with pale communion and sorceress and now this song um, it really, it, it's really interesting because it feels, it, it, I don't know, it, it feels natural now. And I always really, mm. again, really enjoy that album. It was an album that I used to listen to in the car whenever I'd go on long trips, just cause it was a good album to kind of get my head, uh, in a more even space, which is a feat for me. Um, <laughs> And it was an album, again, that just always got my head even, and it was just a really enjoyable listen that at times had some of the heavier elements, but for the most part was pretty laid back, but I really liked what they were doing sonically on that album. But going back and listening to it, like, it just, it's aged very well, in my opinion. I agree, yeah. It, uh, considering the direction they've moved in, and I, I really enjoy the album. Uh, again, standouts for me would be Devil's Orchard and uh, Slither, are my favorite tracks for sure, mm-hmm. which are kind of the heavier ones. But what's this? I like uh, lines and is it lines in your hand or lines in my hand? I I like that one a lot. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I really love um, the second track. Might, that might be the second track. Oh my god! So uh, Opeth expert tra- besides tra- tra- um, tra- except for uh, <laughs> heritage. Except for heritage. Um, God, what is it? The, the second track is right after Devil's Orchard, and it has that acoustic part. I feel part. the dark. Yeah, I feel the dark, man. Yeah. That, I loved it's a great song. That the lines in your hand acoustic. is the eighth song on there. Right before that, it's like famine. Famine's a good one too. And Slither, I love because it has it harkens back to Rainbow because it it's it's a tribute to Kill the King, which when I remember him saying that live, I was like. Oh my god, yeah, they're doing like a tribute to Dio. <laughs> it's like the coolest fucking thing ever. So nice. So uh with all that said, I think we've kind of uh we've kind of talked about the basics here, going back into our 
our uh, knowledge of Opeth and our experience with Opeth. Let's. Uh, I guess it kind of helps with uh, our opinions on this now. Yeah, absolutely. It adds adds context. And, you know, if anybody has watched some of my videos before, I like to have some videos that are really quick and concise that are, you know, eight minutes long. But then sometimes I like to have these longer videos that sets up history and context and really kind of gives you uh, more information when really looking at a song. Because a lot of times people just listen to music on just a surface level. I don't think any of the viewers that we have really do that. A lot of them want to know more about something. But there are some people that just listen to one song and they're done. Mm -hmm. They don't listen to it like five times like we will to try to get some of the finer details out of it. So I think it is important to do that. So, All right. So let's get into the lyrics here. So we begin the song with the words. And I'm not going to be reading off the Swedish Oh, I think you should. (laughs) I don't even know how you would pronounce that. The way that they say it in the in the song is like refried fried fruit. Any Swedish viewers, so, I apologize. Uh, so we begin the song with the words: "Take it as a threat now and leave. Drop of toxins flow to a habit. Tell me what it is you can't see. Teeth grinding flesh in the sabbat. Factual drowning stream. You believe." Slaves will follow conspiracy. Turn the locks on brother and kin. Murder lust on affinity. War in utopia. Slay cornucopia for symmetry. Hmm. All right. I guess he's going, what rhymes with utopia? (laughs) Let's just throw cornucopia in there. Yeah. So, um, I've right, right, right out the gate here. Well, hold on. Let me talk i want to say something about the like i guess how i view his lyrics like as a whole Mm -hmm. so i've all i think we've talked about this before is uh his english is just phenomenal like his vocabulary is just ridiculous and i've really liked um they're very um i don't know like olden times kind of lyrics you know he sings about like timeless things you know like uh um nothing very specific right and and um you know, you've so always he maintained speaks he's in, going about vibe and less yes about exactly he's, direct intent. he's he doesn't speak it's uh it's very a roundabout way of saying things but he says them in a very elegant uh fashion and so sometimes what um and i think the first time i noticed it was watershed he started using some uh some some trite kind of words um <clears throat> even in in porcelain heart i think that might be one of the ways why did oh i know what i was gonna say about that song you know that was the only one that frederick has a writing credit on porcelain heart yeah oh i did not know yeah. that anyways I, I wanted to say that but um so i remember uh oh god what is it um i can't think of the i can't think of the lyrics now but in porcelain heart i just for some reason i just it just felt very um like I said, trite. It felt very uh, overused. Uh, like I'd heard them somewhere before. Like the re- what I always loved about Opeth was, I mean, you'd never find these combination of words anywhere. Mm-hmm. And the next thing I know, he's in, he was using some kind of some sayings, you know, that are that we use in like normal kind of like you know just in normal conversation. Just and, kind of a casual speech. Yeah, it was very casual. Yeah, and Less um, formal. Mm-hmm. And and so. I didn't like that about Watershed. It took me a long time to kind of get over that. I felt like the lyrics had taken a step down. And then um, I didn't feel that you way. You didn't like Ghost of an Idol's False Embrace? Rest your head now, don't you cry? Don't ever tell the reasons why. Like that kind of stuff. Like yeah, I see that what you're AA rhyme, pa- rhyme scheme. He yeah, never really did before. He really you know? simplified yeah. things. And he does have certain words that he tends to utilize a lot. I find all lyricists have them because I have them as well, where they're, they're words that we just go right back to that I don't know why. It just almost becomes kind of like a stamp of like, this yeah. is me writing it. Um, but. I can see what you're saying, though, that you, this is definitely harkening back more to that formal speech that kind of makes you feel like it's, uh, I don't know, there's a sense of elegance to it. It is, it, but, but there's a couple in here. Like it, there's a couple it, that might get a little weird. cringy at times. Well, well, I'm just sitting here. The only thing, um, and I know we haven't gotten to that part yet, but, but all of that is, is great. So, um, so what, I, what, do, what do you, I, 
I'm definitely going to share what what I think that this is kind of setting up here. But yeah. do, do you really feel like this is actually saying something as opposed to the mm-hmm. last time when we talked about um, we talked about Ghost of Perdition, which I is a video I'll link for you do. guys. Um, so you, yeah, you well, he think, said it. We talked. You know, he was he, he did release a video. He did like kind a of, short little thing talking about how this is what corruption people. It's the what heart and hand it. Um, he, it, it's a rough translation to uh, thinking one thing and or saying one thing and doing another. Mm-hmm. Isn't that what he's talking about? So yeah, I, I definitely think this is pretty political. Yeah, it's talking it's, for me. It's really talking about the hypocrisy mm-hmm. and the what society has really started to morph itself into. Um, it was interesting in that video. He was talking about how like he really wasn't trying to alienate anybody by doing stuff like this, but he was really just trying to reflect what's really going on in the world. I think, yeah, I think there's a whole lot of division going on in the world. There's a lot of hypocrisy going on in the world. I think hypocrisy is the big one. And then like in the, I think if we're going to talk about this, let's just go ahead and do the, uh, you want to do the next part? Sure. Let's talk about the next section here. This is kind of like the chorus. The parody is real and we're biding time. And while losing ground, make sure to worship monarchy. Death is but a story in a land of borrowed wealth. The burdened scale weighs heavy with the hunt for dopamine. All right, that's the big one this right there. This is just America, the song. Yeah, I, I know, yeah. <laughs> and, and I know that he, he wasn't saying that it was specifically just talking about the United States. He was just talking about just large uh, countries or entities as a whole in the world that are exhibiting similar... Uh, uh, behaviors, yeah. but for me, maybe it's just because I live in, the, in in America. But this screams for me what's currently going on in the United States. I mean, and, yeah, you and have the war and utopia part. Even says that for me, you know, the war and utopia slay cornucopia. Well, if we we look up the the definition of cornucopia, it's a symbol of plenty. It's a symbol of having amassed a lot. So there's this war going on in this place that is perfect, that has everything, has all the opportunities. And the only way to really get rid of that is to kind of, you know, slay cornucopia is like to really kind of cut out all of those opportunities for symmetry. symmetry. So So it's like like take away rights in order to maintain order and make it look better. And or is it saying through division slay that to make it I don't have that, so take away your, you know, kind of like how. Um, um, I'm wondering if it kind of gets into the the, the um, occupy, Wall Street kind of thing. Like mm-hmm. you have so much money, give me something, some, right? and just so, to make everything fair, like symmetry. I wonder with that word, if is it is it to make things look nice and even, or is it to actually balance equality, out the scales? Right, because I'm because what I think is going to be interesting is if if we could. Um, well, if we knew somebody that speak fluent Swedish and English to, oh, yeah, to because the there's got to be a big language barrier, that, like like you know, well, like symmetry. That just seems that seems like a really odd word to use if you are meaning equality. And I mean, we could just be making a really poor, um, you know, maybe that's that we're looking into the wrong thing. But I wonder what what I wonder which one he wrote first. Yeah, did he write I him be, in Swedish or did he write him in English? I I don't know. I think I think he wrote him in Swedish because if I'm not mistaken, he had talked about the title of the song in that video and how he uh, translated it from Swedish to English. So I don't yeah. know. So that's and gonna be, be, that's gonna be really if good. we do have anybody who is watching that happens to speak Swedish, uh, <clears throat> you know, let us know if you know the other version really does translate to these words because I'd be really curious to see if they do. Um, I do. I did notice listening to the Swedish version. Uh, dopamine is dopamine. So, oh, okay. And it's also really weird to hear my uh, my favorite singer talking about neurotransmitters, which makes me think that he's talking about um, social media. You know, yes. getting likes. You know, triggering that that dopamine. Um, or the even bur- a, the burden scale uh, weighs heavy with. The hunt for dopamine of, of yeah. people always trying to get that gratification, you know, right. th- those dopamine squirts, you know, with with Facebook, with Instagram, with uh, it's also YouTube subscriptions. It's interesting because it's like for the, for me, this whole section here of you know, make sure to worship monarchy. Death is but a story in the land of borrowed wealth. 
and then the whole hunt for well, dopamine that it's like okay so things are kind of we're living on borrowed time we're literally living on borrowed wealth and from, let's just from dis- another country it's got to be america right borrowed wealth yeah and then let's distract the populace and, and and everyone else from those realities and what's actually going on with uh, overstimulation through social media yeah. through media as, as a whole entertainment all this stuff so it, this is interesting for me because I can't ever recall a time where, because I don't feel like this is very vague. It's not. It's very upfront. <laughs> Usually his lyrics are very vague. Right. This seems very upfront, and I've never really seen him kind of showcase this. Uh, I don't want to say ballsiness, but just outright. Yeah. This is what you people are doing, kind of thing, and being outspoken the way he is. I like this next one. Can I read it? Yeah, absolutely. We go into this next section here. Intolerance disguised as a faith. In secrecy, we shun empathy. Soul critique online far too late. A throne for the devout enemy. That first line. Oh, my goodness. I mean, for sure. Intolerance disguised as a faith. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, literally, what is... Do we even need to name all of the... Well, okay. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I'm sure we'll get some hate for that. Any... Fuck it. Um, But no, there... So there's that that's going on in this country, but then you also have that going on in countries like in Britain. You have Brexit and stuff like that, and it's really becoming this movement of intolerance yeah, well, disguised be, as this it could be, uh, unifying uh, uh, ethereal thing of right. like we're doing this because of right homosexuality not supported by Christianity, right? That whole thing that mm-hmm. just here, you know, that's that's um, been the biggest issue, I think. Uh, lately you know by lately the past 10 years or so um Mm -hmm. and then we could think about the um the islamic faith intolerance for for women women's rights things like that but oh no that's our faith that's just how things have always been done you know Mm -hmm. um i think that's a big a big statement right there it attacks Um, so many different areas i attacks not the right word it 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 calls like it calls out and it just points to these right. areas and goes your statues of going. your religion well actually that's very intolerant yeah mm-hmm. and again moving so then moving throughout the song we we repeat that line you know war and utopia slave cornucopia and well, then go into that chorus again but then uh then we move into the quieter section yeah. which is interesting here so let's interesting move on. but not surprising Right, right. I think more for me, musically interesting, less so lyrically, because right. I like how talking about the song again, it has the crunchiness that some of the older Opeth songs had. Mm-hmm. It has that 70s psychedelic vibe that they've been really incorporating into their music. Uh, and then these lyrics and the way the vocals are delivered for me really uh, just tie that whole package together. And I think that the music sells the message for me too, because it's it's abrasive, but not to the point where it's just going to completely alienate people. You could really see people in their 50s or 60s listening to something like this because they're not really beating you over the head with crushing riffs or whatever because right. it harkens back to some of that older music. Mm-hmm. So maybe that was deliberate in trying to spread this message to a universal audience. I don't know. But let's move into this next uh, section here. When I was young, so, so much younger than today... It seemed easier to lead your life. There was no time to surrender and no reason to perceive the burden of pain. As it passed through our lives every year somehow, and it never really went away, yet behind my door was a kingdom. A secret outline showed the way to treasures of clay and beads made of glass. So with this section, for me, this seems like when look when I was younger, there was this so so much younger. <laughs> when I was so so much younger uh, than today, uh, there was this shining beacon. I guess we can call it on top of the hill. There was this idea. There was this place, maybe America, maybe somewhere. We'll, we'll call it America for now. That represented all these opportunities, all these things, and endless possibility to achieve what you wanted to achieve, and anybody could go there and really accomplish anything they wanted to. You think in Sweden, little Michael Ackerfeld was thinking about getting there? 
in America. I think Swedish is Sweden's a pretty sweet place to. Uh, it is, but I also live. know that he really did like a lot of the bands that came from here, uh, and he obviously wanted to have his music resonate with people all over the world. And I think to a certain degree, yeah, it's great to have success, you know, in Sweden, throughout Europe. But if you have success in America, then that's a whole different beast right there. True. So, and, and but I think it too is just the perception that someone from outside of the United States would have on the U.S. as, and I've had people tell me this before that uh, weren't, weren't born and bred here, that this place is looked at differently. Mm-hmm. It's looked at as, yeah, these guys at times they fuck up. They're really naive at times, but you know what? They have a lot of great ideals. They have a lot of things that they try to strive for. And that's really started to erode away as time has persisted. Um, that's really what I think this is talking about. It's really s- just pulling back the curtain and showing what is really going on in this idealized place. You know, you have that intolerance, you have the, uh, the uh, complete and utter uh, lack of control or regulation when it comes to people being taken advantage of. And there's mm-hmm. huge wealth and income uh, gaps that are going on and this utopia is falling apart. That's what I think this section is really talking about for me. Yeah. And, and I really like this whole, a secret outline showed the way to treasures of clay and beads made of glass. Now, way and clay has that kind of easy to, you know, to, like it's that easy way to rhyme something. Mm. But I like that treasures of clay because it's for me that says you can mold whatever you want. You mm. can create what it is that you are envisioning in this this place, this uh, utopian place, and that that is one of the most important things. So, and beads made of glass. I think the glass is that glass is something also that uh, you can really mold and shape into something. And there's, you know, those, it's something that is transparent that you can see through. So it's like, this is really what we're about. And at, at the same time, if you hit it with a certain light, it, it, it shines and glimmers in ways that other material doesn't. So again, I think it's just a little, you know, it's that naive side going, oh, anything is possible. Don't you make glass? Through like pressure too, mm-hmm. something with sand. I think even clay to a certain degree, you have yeah. to heat it to actually when you're done shaping it and molding so it into what you is want. Is this him just having fond memories of when back the easier times? I guess it you might know? be because it's old man Ackerfeld just going. Well, back in my day, I know, remember it used to be like this, and now there was it's not. No time to surrender and no reason to perceive the burden of pain as it passed through our lives every year, and it never really went away. So is it just saying that now we pay more attention to that since we have, you know, since we live in this immediate gratification society that now, you know, we don't have to spend time to go to the library to look something up. We do it immediately on our phone and then our attentions turn to the burden of pain because we simply don't have enough stuff to occupy our anxiety driven minds right so it's like now yeah. we, we have our we're turning our attention to that burden of pain um but he's still noticing that i guess it says behind my door was a kingdom when he was young um i yeah i, I think it's i think what it's talking about too is that nowadays so there is that constant um seeking of that dopamine release that high that Obviously, our our phones and social media give us. If you put things out on the internet, it's forever, so it's always going to be there. Um, it's yes, wow. it's easier to get things and access things. You know, it's much easier than it ever has been. So then, that kind of takes away maybe a little bit of the value of it. Yeah, um, I guess he's talking about his. This could know. even be the talking night, about like art and music too, because of the way that music is, dis- is distributed is completely different than it used to be. I mean, it can really touch <laughs> anything. Yeah, um, I just think it's maybe, you know, he's kind of shining that light on. Maybe he's having a reflective moment of when he was young. You know, not many cares in the world, even though there was 
pain and there was, you know, heartache and stuff like that mm. b- because, you know, everyone always says you're, you know, your inner child or your, you're not, you know, the naivety of, of, a, of a kid will lead, you know, lead us to what was forgotten or, you know, oh my gosh, I've, you know, this child has shown me the importance of, you know, this, so maybe like that's the treasures of clay, like inside his um, younger self, you know, that's where that, that secret outline showed um, the, the way the whole time. Um, so, so, the, so like uh, looking through, through uh, the, the eyes of youth is really the way to kind of observe things. It's it's about the simple things in life, not about all of the mm-hmm. all of the crazy intricacies and the and chasing after the highs. It's really about just yeah. the simple things it, in life. And I think if we look at step out of the lyrics for a sec- for a second and look at how the song's structured, you know, it's you know with that that riff that I sang earlier reminded me of that BT Bam song. I mean, that is it does sound kind of like chaotic and like a like oppressive you know yeah, like, it was like impending doom on the horizon right. and the lyrics kind of follow that you know all the way from the first lines um and and through the multiple courses about you know um the hunt for dopamine and then all of a sudden you know it, which is not new for opeth to to step off of the distortion and and bring in an, an acoustic part um but it is a very uplifting acoustic part which that is yeah. pretty abnormal for them you know usually their um their acoustic parts are very minor key focused very melancholy very sad, very, but yeah and then so th- i did notice that um this has a, a bit more of an uplifting kind of vibe so it does kind of remind me of someone that's um a bit nostalgic and um, taking a moment out of this chaotic, you know, rat race um, to to kind of think about those simpler times mm-hmm. that old young Ackerfeld had in his Swedish days before he his sported Swedish, a, his, his true Sigma utopia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I I think. Excuse me. I think it's refreshing to see them go in a direction that is so uh, counterintuitive to what I initially view Opeth's lyrical content to really be centered around. Because I usually think of gothic landscapes mm-hmm. and tortured souls and uh, possession of some sort. You know, right. this is really it's it's really I mean it's kind of touching on some of those things, but really centering it in the real world, which I've never seen them do before, mm-hmm. and I like I the know. direction. It's I d- yeah, I, d- I, d- it w- I like it a lot. I think I, honestly, after doing this, I I'm, I like it a lot more than I did. Um, well, I'll get o- I'll get over him, you know, him saying dopamine, <laughs> <laughs> or even saying the word online. <laughs> I know, but I'm also um, we're using the the Google suggested lyrics and. Uh, that didn't work out for us too well last week. Well, those lyrics were accurate. They weren't accurate to the <laughs> song that I was trying to sing. So, music match is usually pretty good because that's where artists actually upload or their management uploads that stuff themselves. So, but I, uh, yeah, man, I can't wait for this. Um, I can't wait for this album. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Super stoked. When is it coming out again? Do we have a? Do they have an official it's, release? Yeah, date? it's September, October, I think, something like that. Okay, cool. I've well, been looking at the. Um, I might. I might come out of my uh, vinyl uh, embargo. I feel like I haven't. Your vinyl embargo. <laughs> well, not the right word. It's more um, of like vinyl freeze, man. I'm not allowed to. I haven't bought any because it's so damn expensive and it's just ridiculous pre-orders now, man. That has been They're my like, uh, I remember situation. I finally well. looked at the. It was when the Animals as Leaders Madness and Mini came out. The pre-orders were like seventy five dollars. I was like, holy shit, Woo! man. But Expensive. this is Opeth, uh, and they and you have do- all those other ones. They are doing a deluxe box. Um, they come with the Swedish and the English version. Bank account's gonna take a hit there. So, uh, no. well, guys, uh, thank you so much for tuning in today. As always, I've been Corey Kamori. I'm John Conway. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Later. Love.